The latest on President Donald Trump after testing positive for COVID-19. A special event brings out many West Tennesseans to participate. And meteorologist Corrales Ortiz has a look at the latest weather updates ahead. Now, from West Tennessee's News Channel, this is 7 Eyewitness News at 6. We begin tonight at 6 with, for the first time since President Trump's COVID-19 diagnosis, the White House doctor is holding a briefing. Thank you for joining us. I'm Stephanie Fernandez. But the questions are growing as President spends his first full day at Walter Reed Hospital. Meanwhile, the circle of current and former aides to the president testing positive is rapidly expanding. Emily Schmidt has a closer look. More questions than answers. President Trump's doctor addressing Trump's condition for the first time since his COVID diagnosis. The first week of COVID, and in particular days 7 to 10, are the most critical in determining the likely course of this illness. At this time, the team and I are extremely happy with the progress the president has made. Dr. Sean Conley says the president is fever-free and not having difficulty breathing, but didn't say when he contracted the virus. This is raising questions about the timeline of the illness. If you'd look at the calendar, if he started to develop symptoms, you know, on, on Friday or Thursday night, whenever it may have been, go back two or three days. Go back. Those are actually end up being the most critical days. That's the beginning of the week. That's during the debate. That's during all that travel. Dr. Conley did confirm President Trump was treated with the therapeutic remdesivir and received a dose of Regeneron, an experimental antibody cocktail. Remdesivir works a little bit differently than the antibodies. We're maximizing uh, all aspects of his care, uh, attacking uh, this virus. Meanwhile, more cases in the president's inner circle are emerging, including former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie, who helped Trump with Tuesday's debate. And Senator Ron Johnson is now the third Republican lawmaker to test positive for COVID-19. Former White House counselor Callie Ann Conway and the president's campaign manager Bill Stepien also tested positive. New at six, organizers with a local clinic are hard at work looking to raise money to expand their services across West Tennessee. WBBJ 7 Eyewitness News reporter Diamond Williams takes us to the event. Birth Choice held its annual Walk for Life Saturday morning at West Jackson Baptist Church. It gives the community an opportunity to help raise funds for their clinic. Our clinic uh, serves uh, people who are facing unexpected pregnancies. We give free pregnancy testing and ultrasound. Uh, we also minister to them in other ways, like with our parenting classes. Dawson says events like this are huge for the clinic. This is how they get the majority of their funding to be able to keep the clinic up and running and to be able to service the community of West Tennessee. We are a nonprofit organization and we don't get any government funding. We run solely on donations from individuals, from churches, from some you know very generous organizations. And so all these people here who raise funds for us, this this is how we are community run, community funded. Dawson says this is the largest turnout for the annual walk she's seen compared to previous years, and they've also raised more funds this year than they did last year. Our goal was fifty thousand and I'm going to make an announcement today that so far what we know we've raised is about 51,000. So we've exceeded our goal and we're probably going to have more than that as well. And we are just beyond thankful. Dawson says many young women might feel during these uncertain times that abortion is the only option, but the clinic sets to empower them that they can choose life. In Jackson, Diamond Williams, WBBJ7 Eyewitness News. Birth Choice is the only clinic in Jackson that offers these type of services. And if you would like to donate, you can visit our website and click Scene on 7. Now let's head over to meteorologist Corrales Ortiz for the weather. Hey, Stephanie, another beautiful day today. We saw another cool day on top of that with those temperatures just below the 70 degree mark, but we saw plenty of sunshine to work with. Here's a view over in Lexington. Now that the sun is starting to set earlier and earlier every day, we are going to start to see our evenings uh, be a little bit darker 
uh, earlier, sadly. So our high today was 69 degrees. On average, we should be around the upper 70s. It was about 10 degrees cooler, but our morning lows were in the upper 30s. A good 15 degrees cooler where we normally should be at. Currently sitting at 65, still mostly sunny. Those dew points are on the low end, indicating very dry air with those dew points around the mid to upper 40s. So fortunately, we have been very dry, but that is going to change. Although we'll be seeing increasing cloud cover tonight, it won't be as cool with temperatures expected to stay around that uh, lower 50 degree mark. We are going to be seeing chances for rain increase though, as we see a cold front push you later tonight. So this first look is brought to you by Helping Hands of Tennessee. Expect a few spotted showers by the time it gets early Sunday, but it's not going to last very long. We can actually expect a very long stretch of some dry weather in store for next week. More on that coming up in minutes. Stephanie. We have updated numbers for COVID-19 from the Tennessee Department of Health. In West Tennessee, Madison County has 60 new cases of COVID-19 with a total of 68 deaths. Gibson County has 15 new cases, 26 total deaths. Carroll County has 21 new cases, 20 total deaths. Chester County has one new case, 12 total deaths. Crockett County has four new cases, 20 total deaths. Harding County has three new cases, 16 total deaths. And Henderson County has 14 new cases, 24 total deaths. For a full list of cases by county, look for the story on our website under the COVID-19 tab. And on the state level, according to the Tennessee Department of Health, more than 17,000 additional people have tested for COVID-19 since yesterday, and 855 people are currently hospitalized since yesterday. Well, I do have some rain to talk about for this weekend, but much of next week is looking dry once again. A full look at the forecast is coming up. Storm Team Weather with meteorologist Corrales Ortiz. It's been an amazing start to our weekend, and although we do have a little bit of rain to talk about for the last half of the weekend, we are not going to be expecting a wet week in store. Much like what we saw this week, we are going to be seeing several days of some dry weather in store. Here's a view of our uh, eyewitness news backyard camera. So right now, 65 degrees, mostly sunny. Those winds are staying right now light out of the north northeast will be calm going into tonight. Temperatures right now are sitting around the lower 60s to upper 60s. It is a lot cooler further to our south and east. They're already starting to dip into almost the 50s for this evening as the sun continues to set and we aren't going to be as cool as what we saw this morning when we saw those temperatures in the morning in the upper 30s. We'll probably be around the upper 40s to lower 50s as we see cloud cover increase overnight. Well, the reason it's going to be increasing is because we're going to be seeing a cold front push through our direction late tonight into early Sunday morning. What that's going to do, increase our clouds and as well as bring us a little bit of rain, but not a whole lot. The chance for rain really is going to be staying to our far north. As you can see, already seeing just a few showers just north of Paducah and might see a few of those swing on by late tonight. Most of that is going to be isolated and remaining kind of further to our north about north of the interstate. So in terms of rain chances, it is on the lower end. So here's a better look at that in our future cast. We are going to be seeing again as around midnight, a few little spotted showers here or there, maybe seeing a line move through in the early morning hours, but you can kind of see a lot of that has been concentrated to our far north and then it'll just be dealing with partly sunny conditions and already expected to clear out later in the afternoon and evening as that cold front continues to push on through and we become a lot drier once again. 
after that, it's just going to be staying sunny for the time being and dry for pretty much much of next week. Not expecting a whole lot of change in the forecast. So in terms of what we can expect going into next weekend, very low chance maybe seeing the return of rain back into a forecast. It's really all dependent on what's going to be happening in the tropics. Right now we only have one named system, which is Tropical Storm Gamma, which is kind of hovering over in the southern Atlantic, far west Caribbean, and we're going to keep watching out on that, of course, with the next potential development that has a medium chance right now over in the eastern central Caribbean that will eventually move towards the north and east around where Tropical Storm Gamma is. So something we'll keep you updated on. Not expecting a whole lot of change in the forecast, but fortunately, this is where our, our latest app, which is our uh, Storm Team weather app that can keep you guys updated on the go, really, and what we can expect for our upcoming week ahead. We do have daily weather updates for you guys as well. And if we do have any developments in the tropics, you guys will be notified as well. You can download it on your smart device, whether it's an Android or an iPhone. So for tonight, expect those temperatures to hover around 50 degrees to get increased cloud cover, calm winds, and then we'll start to see a few spotted showers. Starting off early morning, temperatures will be around 70 degrees. After that, clearing out by the afternoon and evening, those winds are staying light. Out on the north, northwest, Picking up a little bit, sustained up to 10 miles per hour, and then calming down as we go into tomorrow evening. So here's a look at that seven day forecast, uh, which is brought to you by Beale Law Firm in Lexington. We can expect to see those temperatures hover around the 70 degree mark, warming up in towards the middle of the week. But as you can see, pretty much no rain chances all week long as we go into the new week of October. Stephanie? Well, thank you for joining us, everyone. We'll see you at 10.